Welcome to My Hometown, the program that explores clubs, organizations, businesses, and issues across Nassau and Suffolk counties and sheds light on the different towns that are making a difference. My Hometown. My name is Bill Horan, along with my co-host, Nassau Community College student, Zach Turkel. And today, we're shining the spotlight on an organization that wants to shine a spotlight of their own on government in New York State. I love it when we get political, Bill. And today, we're going to be looking at a nonprofit group that wants to promote honest, open, responsive, and limited government in our state. Can't wait to find out more with our guest, James Call, founder and director of ChangeNYS.org. James, welcome to my hometown on The Voice of Nassau Community College 90.3 WHPC. Thanks for having me, Bill and Zach. Now, you have to tell us, what is ChangeNYS.org? It sounds just like a website. Sure. I know it's much more than that. Well, it is uh, It is partly a website. Uh, we're on Facebook. We are on Twitter and all the uh, social media platforms. But uh, ChangeNYS.org is a not-for-profit that I started back in 2013. Uh, I was going to uh, school to uh, taking some classes for the Ph.D. program at the CUNY Graduate Center in History. And... Uh, Superstorm Sandy hit, and I uh, had to withdraw because of uh, my occupation at the time. And I took the money. I started the not for profit, and basically, what we're looking to do is start conversations about government in New York, uh, the the non responsiveness of our government, the corruption issues in our state, uh, all these things that if you talk to people that live in the area or live pretty much anywhere in the state, that they're addressing and seeing in their newspapers. And how did this not-for-profit begin? Did you always have an idea, oh, I always wanted to start a non-for-profit, or did it just come out of the blue? So um, I actually um, started reading the New York State Constitution and getting into constitutional history when I was 24 years old. Uh, I was 24. I took an oath to the U.S. Constitution and the New York State Constitution when I became a police officer in the NYPD. And then I read the documents, and I got really into constitutional history. Hmm. Um, I was going out and talking to community groups after I got my graduate degree in constitutional history and started teaching here at Nassau in the history department. And I went around talking about the U.S. Constitution, and um, I I found that there was a ready audience for these conversations. Even when people disagree with you about controversial issues, they seem to respect the idea that you're you're talking about these things. Uh, And that led me to... um, Starting the not-for-profit about New York State government. After I read the New York State Constitution, I found that there were many things either lacking in the structure of our government or things that could be changed uh, that were kind of antiquated in that document. And I said maybe the not-for-profit is the best way, one of the best ways to have uh, really promote this conversation that I was looking to have. Hmm. Jim, can you tell us what's happening in Albany right now that changenys.org doesn't agree with. So, I mean, there's a whole host of different things on our website, and I've written a number of op-eds. I'm just and, thinking, I'm asking yeah. you that question, you probably need yeah. three days to answer. Oh, yeah, right. yeah. Well, how but much I'll time do you have? 60 yeah. seconds. Um, so, 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 one of the things I think that's really important, just to kind of just boil down one of the many issues that we address, is um, something like ballot access, let's say. And this is not something that most people or even most voters think about. When they go into the polling place, they see the names before them, and when they see the names before them, they're choosing out of the people that are listed within the ballot that they see in front of them. But what most people don't know is how people got on that ballot. What they don't know is the laws are the laws in the state of New York that regulate how someone becomes a candidate on the ballot. And the laws in New York State create some of the most difficult barriers for you or I or Zach to run for public office if we wanted to be a candidate in our hometown or even for state government. And I think that those barriers that are created up in Albany um, are something that need to be changed. If you want to run for public office, it shouldn't be hard to run for public office. It should be fairly easy. And then the voters should be able to decide whether or not you are the candidate of their choice, not the process. Now, what is your organization, changenys.org, 
uh, doing to help the people in New York State? Because uh, I'll tell you, for sitting in my seat, it just seems like such a monumental problem. Sure. Uh, it's it's almost like putting one drop of ketchup on a hamburger, and that might be overly generous. Sure. Uh, because there's so many things to be done. Uh, I, I don't know how much of a staff or group of people you have working with you, but it just seems like you would need uh, 10 for every politician that's around. Sure. Well, well our, our, our goal isn't necessarily to change all of government. We, we've taken on a handful of reforms that we think are important, and maybe it is the drop on the ketchup kind of attitude uh, or approach that might be the best way to handle this. I think if you try a broad brush approach, uh, where other organi- organizations might just say, well, government is bad and government needs to change. Our attitude is to kind of, uh, or our strategy is to pinpoint a handful of reforms that we think will help bring about some of the changes that we want, like ballot access reform, like education about government. Uh, one of the things that we did and, and one of the people in our organization started, um, Printing once a month when Albany legislature is in session, printing out every bill that was voted on and became law and the vote of every lawmaker in a specific area, how they voted on that bill. And then we put that out to those communities on different uh, community pages and the webs on uh, Facebook. And it just kind of informs them about how their representatives in Albany are voting on different bills. So it might be the drop on the ketchup approach, but I think no, that's I think a that's better very way. good. Yeah, yeah no, that's not a know. bad idea because yeah. people sometimes don't even know who their politicians are, and sure. it'd be nice to get to know who they are and how they vote align. Exactly. Know? Yeah. Well, at the top of our Facebook page, and that is a common response that people don't know who their state lawmakers are. They're so concentrated on either the presidency or the United States Senate or even the U.S. House of Representatives. Uh, one of the things I often say is we spend so much time talking about Washington that Albany seems to get a pass for all the things that they're either doing or not doing. Right. So at the top of our our Facebook page, you can go there, click on a link, put in your zip code or your address, and they'll tell you who your state lawmakers are, and you can kind of peruse and see how they're voting on these big issues, like abortion reform up in Albany, like campaign finance reform, um, like a handful of issues, like the budget that just passed, and uh, we can kind of get more informed and educated, which is one of the missions of the organization. That's great. I, I really I like those ideas, and I think that uh, I was asking the big question, but those are the things we can do, mm-hmm. and you're really getting us started and running out of the uh, I forget what do they call those starters out of the uh, gates out of the gates yeah. uh, very quickly. That's so, right. And you are listening to the uh, my hometown on the voice of Nassau Community College ninety point three WHPC. My name is Zach Draco, along with Bill Horan, and today we're talking about changenys.org dot org with James Cole, their founder. And, Jim, how are you educating and engaging and advocating your organization to the people of New York State? Because sometimes it's hard to get to everybody. How are you achieving that? Well, one of the things that we're doing is uh, locally and and even just in different areas around the state, we're going out to community groups, groups that are already having conversations about government. We're kind of trying to inject our voice into there and maybe uh, inject a different perspective that they're not taking. Uh, A lot of people that do talk about government, as I mentioned before, do spend a lot of time talking about Washington, D.C., and our nation's capital, and we're trying to say, hey, there's this other government, and it's our state government, and we should be spending time on that. Uh, we are also uh, putting things up on Facebook um, nearly almost every day, put up two or three articles from around the state, kind of some commentary there uh, about issues that are developing in the news, corruption issues, uh, issues of just good or bad governance that might not be directly related to corruption. That's not our only mission, um, but just trying to get out there on social media personally having conversations like the ones we're having here uh, and that's basically our focus op-ed writing things like that and it is very interesting because people normally assume oh it's the government you know they'll think of right exactly what you said jim the presidency and the senate but really the government in your state is the one that's affecting you and your daily lives it's not washington and people just don't really think like that Right. Well, the amount of laws coming out of um, out of Albany that impact us directly are, you know, um, have a great resonance with the people and how we live our lives. Uh, there was an there was an old statement back from uh, the time that we were a very young state after the revolution, and it said that um, you know the, the the liberties of the people are safe because the New York Legislature is out of session, and <laughs> it's just just the idea that we're passing more laws does not necessarily mean that that's better government right you know we can look at it under the prism of you know the more laws 
are rest- are designed to restrict our liberties as well. So the other conversation that we're looking to have is this kind of balance, not just between Washington and Albany and which government gets to pass a law, but whether or not that law uh, makes sense in terms of how you want to live your life. There's the balance between government and individual liberty that we're looking to have, and we don't hear much of up in Albany. Uh, it's pretty much just a conversation of when they will pass a law and how restrictive it'll be and to be frank up in albany how costly it will be when meanwhile we should be injecting into that conversation um, how does this affect us how we live our lives how we raise our families whether we could afford to live in the communities that we grew up in Um, these are all important conversation to individual new yorkers that it just seems like albany is not making part of their conversation and our organization is looking to inject that liberty versus power connotation about government. Jim, if somebody likes what they're hearing and saying, gee, I want to know more about this guy, how to get in touch, how do we get in touch with you? So we have a website, changenys.org, which is you know right in line with the name of our organization. You can go on there and look at a couple of contact points. Uh, there's a voicemail you can leave a message on. Um, you could email us um, at uh, jcole, C-O-L-L, at changenys.org. You can access that on the website as well um, and uh, just hit us up on social media you can follow our page on Facebook uh, again if this is something you're interested in you can message us on that on that format as well and um, we'll give this information again to our audience but if somebody else also wants to get involved is there a yearly fee to join or is this all volunteer or is it volunteer or you know select group no we, we, we're a not for profit which means that we can raise money in the state of New York but we choose not to at this point we're not an organization looking to fundraise or anything like that we're really an organization looking to do a grassroots effort where you know Facebook is a medium that we can get our message out and it really doesn't cost us much money or any money so um, we're keeping our costs very much down, and we're trying to provide the best product. We're really trying to be, I guess you could say, kind of the model of what we would expect our state to do, and that is keep costs very low and provide a good product, and that's what we should want out of government. So since that's what we're advocating for, that's part of our mission of the organization. Now, you claim that Albany needs to be fixed, but the big question is, can it be fixed? Uh, somebody advocates for something. If we're against that person, we might say, oh, they're just doing it for their big business or their own benefit. And let's just give them the benefit of the doubt. They could be very sincere about this and believe this is the right thing to do. But we think it's political or we think they're doing it for their own means. And, of course, we have, you know, we sure. feel our reasons are right. Of course. So, how do you fight against something like this? It's almost like pushing the wind. If you push it this way, it just goes around you. So, so when it comes to government, we are fighting some type of either apathy or some type of entrenched interest. And those are two separate concerns. People that don't think that their change, that their vision of government can become the vision or people that benefit from the current vision. And those are two different um kind of uh, obstacles that we have. Um, Our goal is not necessarily to say that our organization is kind of the answer to what they're looking for. Listen, if someone benefits under this system up in Albany, then this is probably not the organization for them. But if they're looking to have conversations about government, if they're looking to see what might be better ways for our government to address the concerns of the people and good governance, then our organization is ready and willing to have that conversation. Not everybody that follows our page has to agree with everything that we advocate for. But As I said before, one of the things that we're looking to do is have the conversation. So if you go to our page, even if you disagree with something on our page, we're not deleting out unfavorable posts about what we're analyzing and advocating for. We want that conversation. So anybody that wants to be talking about New York State government, we believe that our organization is a destination spot. It's not something that should be, you know, kind of left off because you might not agree with one or two of the bullet points that we're in favor of. James, we're at a point in the show where we're going to take a brief break. We want to remind our audience that I'm Bill Horan. I'm sitting here with Zach Durkell, and today we're talking about changenys.org with James Call, the founder and director. You're listening to My Hometown on the voice of Nassau Community College, 90.3 WHPC. 
90.3 WHPC reminds you that when your loved ones need help getting around, you're more than just a daughter or a son. You're their driver, personal shopper, and financial manager. And then before you know it, you're their cook, personal assistant, physical therapist, and even nurse. When you start taking care of a loved one, you don't realize the challenge of playing so many roles. AARP understands the many roles you play, and to help, they've created an online caring resource center for the over 42 million caregivers in the U.S. who are caring for a parent or loved one. At aarp.org slash caregiving, you can find local resources and connect with experts and the caregiving community. Better care for ourselves and the ones we love. Visit aarp.org slash caregiving to find resources. Brought to you by AARP, the Ad Council, and the voice of Nassau Community College, 90.3 WHPC. And now we return to My Hometown. Thanks for being with us here today on The Voice of Nassau Community College, 90.3 WHPC. My name is Bill Horan. I'm here with Zach Durkell. And today we're talking to about ChangeNYS.org with James Call, their founder and director. Zach, you well, have a question? I definitely do. Jim, most people would agree that not enough people are using their constitutional right to vote. Can greater access to the ballot improve Albany? So I, I absolutely am in favor of and the organization advocates for greater ballot access in terms of uh, voters um, uh, being able to exercise their right to vote. Um, we are also, and I know a number of uh, politicians, a number of changes had taken place last month or actually back in January related to uh, increased voter access. Uh, that is, um, uh, early voting laws were recently passed um, related to uh, people being able to vote on more than just one day. New York State had some of the most restrictive laws for voters in terms of when you register, when you could change party affiliation, um, and there is some wiggle room in a handful of laws that passed back in January. Um, we are also in favor of, in addition to that, something that I talked about in the first segment, and that is I, I think it is a voter access, and we think that it is a voter access issue having more candidates on the ballot. That's one of the principal, most important things that we are advocating for, and that is making more lax, more relaxed the laws related to you or I or someone else running for public office. That is also a, a voting rights issue for you as a voter to have more candidates to choose from than just the party endorsed or the machine endorsed candidates, um, and the process needs to change to en- encourage that. Now, Jim, during the break, I asked you, I said, do you ever wake up in the morning and say, how did I ever get into this? Oh, my gosh, how am I going to get out of it? And to your credit, you said you really enjoy this. You're enthusiastic about it. And that's what everybody always likes to see, the, the anybody in any profession, that they enjoy what they're doing, etc. But I want to know if I got this next uh, question to you incorrect, because I think you claim that there's a need for greater politics. And am I missing a word in there, or am I just not reading that right? Well, well, when we talk about greater politics, and I am very much enjoying these conversations and this conversation with you guys, um, but in a different way, greater politics. When we talk about politics, we're talking about a process by which the people are involved in decision-making. And when we say greater politics, I don't mean more po- political entrenchment. I don't mean more political corruption or nepotism or the friends and family plan that we've seen at the state and especially at the local level here in Nassau County, but more politics, more catering to or addressing the needs of the constituents. We see less and less and less of that. Uh, even though we have social media platforms for our politicians to and our elected leaders to communicate directly with us uh, very, very quickly, um, I I think that it's good government organizations that are kind of promoting these conversations when our elected leaders should be doing this also. So when we say more politics, what we really mean is more involvement of the individual citizen in the workings of our government. Yeah, our I mean, government is very yeah. Yeah, our government operates very much like they tell us what services they're going to offer and then we kind of pick which service. Um, when government should be much more responsive, people should be part of the town hall meetings more than they are and uh, that's a handful of things that we're advocating for. And do you think a constitutional convention that only means 
to improving Albany? And for those who are listening that don't know, what is a constitutional convention? So back in 2017, um, New York State uh, was put on the ballot, mandated by the New York State Constitution, that um, we would be asked whether or not we would hold a constitutional convention. Now, New York State is required to put that question on the ballot every 20 years. And the state overwhelmingly rejected that idea. Uh, But the Constitutional Convention is not the only way that we could change government. Um, We were not advocating for the convention, but the Constitutional Convention is only one way. That every once a generation that people can kind of weigh on this question. We have created a system where, for the most part, amendments to our state constitution, laws that are passed, all have to go through the legislature. And what we need our group and other groups and individual citizens is to create change by putting pressure on lawmakers in order to to make those changes. I mean, if we were to wait for the next constitutional convention question, we'd have to wait until 2037 for that to be on the ballot. And there's no guarantee, like in 2017, that that would pass. Mm -hmm. No one wants to wait that long, especially uh, people affiliated with my organization. We want to bring about change much sooner than that. Jim, I'm just wondering if, if um, is there some place in the United States that maybe you look at and say, that's exemplary, that's a state, a town, a county that uh, we could follow? And I'm not talking about that, sure. you know, there's always that town in the West where they have 11 people and yeah, yeah, yeah. the 100-year-old man sure. gets elected governor or mayor. But is there some place that you would say that's the, the pattern we should follow? Well, the, the great thing about the system that we have is that You know, we have 51 separate constitutions in our country. One, the U.S. Constitution, which out of all of them, most people are most familiar with, um, even if they're not that familiar with it, they're more familiar with that than any of the others. And the 50 other constitutions are the other state constitutions. So what we can do, as you're suggesting, is kind of look at what other governments are doing and see what works in one state and what works in another. One thing that we're advocating for is a change in the way that we allocate electoral votes in the state of New York. We have a winner-take-all system. Okay, if you, if candidate A beats candidate B by one vote in the state of New York, out of hundreds of thousands, or in, in the case of New York, millions cast, well, that person gets 100% of our 29 electoral votes. Well, Nebraska and Maine have a system whereby they allocate electoral votes based upon congressional districts. So each vote matters more in each of those congressional districts. It's not win or take all. And what we would have if we went to that system that Nebraska and Maine have, we would have both the Republican and the Democratic Party competing in some of these districts in New York State. Now, if you're in favor of Democrats getting 29 electoral votes because you want to help your party, well, this is not the system for you. In the same way that if you're in favor of Republicans getting 30-some-odd electoral votes and you live in the state of Texas, it's not the system for you. Mm -hmm. But if you want to encourage politicians, especially politicians running for the presidency and politicians in Congress, to pay attention to the state of New York, one of the things that we could do is follow what Maine and Nebraska are doing, and that is go to an electoral college allocation that is not winner-take-all. And that doesn't require a constitutional amendment. It makes sense to me. Yeah, it does yeah. make sense. Huh. Yeah. It definitely does, and definitely to engage um, a lot of the people. And I just want to let our listeners know that you were listening to my hometown, the voice of Nassau Community College 90.3. WHPC. My name is Zach Durkel, along with Bill Horan, and today we're talking about ChangeNYS.org with James Cole, their founder. And Jim, if you believe there is corruption in state government, how can it be fought? Because, you know, there are some people that are in government, they're like, I kind of like this. I kind of like being a part of this. You know, we don't want to leave. How can we, how can people fix that? Well, I, I, at this point, I don't think it's a question of if there is corruption in our state government. Politico, uh, a handful of years ago, did a study and said that the New York State Legislature was the most corrupt legislature in the country. Mm-hmm. So, it's, so we're it's, number one. That's we are number the, one. Which, not that we really like yeah, that. That's not something to be one. proud of. Yeah, but that, would be better than that's winning exactly what the headline said. Team, we're number, yeah. New York is number one. Uh, <laughs> but this is not something that, you know, we have many other things in our state that, that distinguish us as a great state. And this is not something that we want to promote as something... Uh, Right. That that we're proud of, obviously beyond you know the the, the joking that we would right. do over it, but um, one of the things that we could do is vote out 
you know, incumbents, if we do not think that they are representing us adequately, we could run primaries against them. We can get more involved and more engaged. We could everything as basic as, you know, write a letter to your member of the assembly or member of the New York State Senate or the governor to let them know that this is something that you're paying attention to. Uh, Mm -hmm. We had talked earlier, and it seems like almost every day in our local newspaper here, Newsday, there's something about political corruption. And then we kind of go out and vote for the same people back in. Uh, We, the voters, need to realize that in the type of government that we have, in a republic, in a republican form of government, small r republican, we have power over the government. It is not them that has power over us. And we need to re-exercise that once in, all, once in a while to remind them that they work for us. Because they certainly think many occasions when it comes to corrupt public officials that we are here to serve them. And we need to kind of remind them of that. Now, Jim, you've run discussions in different towns around Long Island. Yes. And I think that's fantastic. I don't know who attends, but I would think a class, students, seniors who, who have the time to get involved in it are often very, very interested because they took part in wars. They helped make this country. Absolutely. And um, what what are those meetings like? Uh, who decides what's going to be talked about? So o- oftentimes when I go in, I talk about government reforms and I talk about my organization. I usually ask people to leave their party hat at the door because there are some things that we're going to advocate for that are good for Republicans and some things that are good for Democrats, and that's not our goal. I said to them when I put up a handful of these reforms or even the reforms that we're talking about today, you know, if you are simply looking at it as what helps my party, well, this is not the organization for you. But if you say, what can we do to make New York State a place where ideas come here, where people come here, where people look at us as kind of a model for government, um, then simply catering to one or even two of the political parties is not is not helpful. So when I go and talk to these organizations, uh, to, to different groups and community organizations and different people that are interested in this, they're very receptive to these ideas. People are very receptive of engaging in dialogue on our Facebook page or 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 on our uh, on our Twitter or our Twitter feed. Um, so the people are ready to have these conversations. Uh, it's just finding the format and the forum to provide that, and that's what we're looking to do and continue to do. Now, again, uh, tell us if someone is interested. How do they get in touch with you? Where your organization is? Are there fees, dues? Uh, no fees, no dues. Uh, you can go to our Facebook page, uh, Change NYS, or you can go to our uh, you can go to our website, changenys.org. Find out a little bit more about us. Send us a note. Tell us something that you're interested in. Um, you may have a great idea. We 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 don't we don't pretend to think that we have a monopoly on good ideas. So you have an idea for good government. Uh, we'd love to help advocate for that if we agree and it fits in with our. Our, our policy of uh, good government in New York State. And, uh, Zach, I'm just going to throw in a question. Talking to you, your background as a detective, a college professor, etc., do you think we'll ever see your name on a ballot? Well, I actually <laughs> ran uh, twice uh, locally, uh, oh. two years in a row. Um, I ran a primary uh, in the Republican Party two years in a row, one for Nass County Legislator and one for uh, New York State Assemblyman. Uh, I don't rule anything out in the future, but mm-hmm. uh, I'm still teaching here at Nassau, as uh, I am happy to do, so I was not successful in those runs, but uh, we were happy to kind of get our message out during those campaigns. Well, then you proved it. You are yeah. an honest man. If you weren't successful, you must be an honest <laughs> man. <laughs> James, right. we want to thank you so much for being thank with you. us. You've really uh, enlightened both of us today for what's going on, yeah. and I think to members of our audience, so thanks so much, and thanks for your service as a uh, uh, detective in yeah, the we do City appreciate Police it. And uh, for instructing young minds here at Nassau Community College. Thank you. Thank you, Bill. Thank you, Zach. And thank you to the audience as well. And we would like to remind people that I'm Bill Horan. I'm here with Zach Turkel. You've been listening to My Hometown on the Voice of Nassau Community College, 90.3 WHBC. We'd like to get your feedback on My Hometown. Send your comments to whpc at ncc.edu. Nassau Community College, where success starts and continues. Till next time, this is Bill St. James. And remember, there's no town like your hometown.